Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, I'm getting back to what I love doing, big benchmark comparisons. And I'm going to start with the GeForce RTX 3080 12 gigabyte and Radeon RX 6900 XT. Now, if you're wondering why these two models, it's because right now they occupy roughly the same price point, though admittedly graphics card pricing is highly volatile right now. And I expect by the time many of you get to watch this content, pricing will have moved around a bit and hopefully for the better. But as it stands right now, the typical asking price for an RTX 3080 12 gigabyte model over in the US is $1,600 to $1,800, while the 6900 XT is more like $1,500 to $1,600. Then here locally in Australia, they're about the same price at around $2,200 Aussie. So if you happen to have a large wad of cash that you'd like to part with in exchange for a graphics card, which one should you buy? To answer that question, I've got the new ASUS RTX 3080 Tough Gaming OC 12GB graphics card on hand, and I'll be comparing it to the AMD Radeon RX 6900 XT. Now to make this comparison as fair as possible, the ASUS Tough Gaming will be run at the official NVIDIA clock specification, so that means we'll be showing the stock performance of both products. Now for all of this testing, I used our AMD Ryzen 9 5950X test system with 32GB of DDR4 3200Cell14 dual rank dual channel memory. Both GPUs were tested at 1080p, 1440p and 4K across 50 games using Windows 11. The driver versions used are as follows, Radeon Adrenaline 21.10.2 and GeForce Game Ready Driver 511.79 as these were the latest available drivers when I started testing about a week ago. Now, we're not going to go over the data for all 50 games individually, as that would take all day. Instead, we're going to take a close look at the results for about a dozen of them, and then we'll take a look at how these two GPUs compared head-to-head -head across all games tested in a single graph, or a series of graphs looking at each resolution. Finally, please note all graphs will be made available to Floatplane and Patreon members for all the individual games. Okay. Let's get into it. First up, we have the new Dying Light 2 survival horror title. For those of you targeting low resolutions, both GPUs push well over 100 FPS at 1080p and around 100 FPS at 1440p. The RTX 3080 12GB was 6% faster at 1080p and 10% faster at 1440p, so a reasonable performance advantage there. Though where you're really going to notice the difference is at 4K, and here the GeForce GPU offered a 16% performance bump, producing a 60-ish FPS experience. Now for testing Total War Warhammer 3, I'm running the built-in benchmark using the battle scene, and this is another new game that plays better on Nvidia hardware. Here the RTX 3080 12GB was 8% faster at 1080p, 20% faster at 1440p, and a massive 32% faster at 4K. So this is an easy win for the GeForce GPU, and it'll be interesting to see if AMD manages to claw back any performance with future driver releases. Next up we have the ever popular Call of Duty Warzone, and for this one, like most of the games tested, we are using the highest quality settings. Despite that, both GPUs pushed up well over 144 FPS on average at 1440p, and this time the Radeon GPU came out on top, though we're only talking about a mere 5% performance advantage. Interestingly, that advantage was expanded upon at 1440p to 8%, probably due to the game becoming less CPU bound. But at 4K, where the Ampere architecture is often better utilized, the 3080 comes back to match the 6900 XT with 92 FPS. Moving on to Forza Horizon 5, the 6900 XT pulled well ahead at 1080p, with an impressive 149 FPS on average, making it 25% faster. That margin was reduced slightly at 1440p, but even so the Radeon GPU was still 20% faster, which is quite a significant margin. AMD were able to maintain their advantage even at the 4K resolution, and the extra 12% you get with the 6900 XT here will be noticed by some gamers. Another new game we have for testing is God of War, and this is a gorgeous looking game. But despite the breathtaking visuals, it runs really well on modern high-end PC hardware, even at 4K where the 3080 was good for 92 FPS on average, making it 18% faster than the 6900 XT. That's a big win for Nvidia, but even so the 6900 XT still delivered a highly playable performance at this extreme resolution with 78 FPS. The GeForce GPU did still provide stronger performance at 1080p and 1440p, though the margins here are heavily reduced to single digit figures and both rendered well over 100 FPS. 
Next, we have Far Cry 6, and unfortunately, this lightly threaded game is very easy to CPU bottleneck at lower resolutions when using high-end GPUs. This is why the 1080p and 1440p results are quite similar, with only a very small FPS boost when going from 1440p to 1080p. Moving to 4K where the game starts to become more GPU bound, the 6900XT was 12% faster with 84fps on average, opposed to 75fps with the RTX 3080, though needless to say both produced highly playable performance. F1 2021 was tested using the ultra high quality preset which enables ray tracing when supported, so that means both the RTX 3080 12GB and 6900XT were tested with RT effects enabled. As I've found in the past with this title, the 1% lows are lower with the Radeon GPUs, though I've not noticed a difference when gaming. For example, it's really impossible to tell which GPU you're actually using, especially at 1080p and 1440p. The 3080 was 12% faster at 4K, which is a noteworthy improvement, and I'm sure that some gamers will be able to spot slash feel the difference, but overall they are very similar. Now, Metro Exodus Enhanced was designed to showcase RTX features, and it was developed before AMD's RDNA 2 architecture was available. So unsurprisingly, it doesn't run very well on Radeon GPUs. This version of the game only works with GPUs that support hardware accelerated real-time ray tracing, and we're testing with the ultra quality preset enabled. The 6900 XT is capable of playable performance at 1080p and 1440p, but at 1440p, you're looking at 155% greater performance with the RTX 3080. Then for those of you wanting to play this title at 4K, you can get around 60 FPS with the RTX 3080 12GB, while the 6900 XT falls short of even 30 FPS. Next, we have Red Dead Redemption 2, and this title has been well optimized for both AMD and Nvidia hardware. So as a result, we're looking at almost identical performance here, with just a few frames in it at each resolution. Here we have another newly released game with Rainbow Six Siege Extraction, and this title is also well optimized for AMD and Nvidia hardware. That said, the 6900XT enjoys a small performance advantage at 1080p. We then see similar performance at 1440p, while the GeForce GPU pulled ahead by a reasonable margin at 4K, though the 1% lows were comparable. We're also looking at virtually identical performance between these two GPUs in Apex Legends, and with the highest possible quality settings in place, both easily pushed up over 100 FPS at 4K. The Fortnite results were a bit unexpected, as the 6900XT was actually slower than the 3080 at 1080p, yet faster at 1440p and 4K. Admittedly, the margins aren't huge in either direction, though the 13% increase seen at 4K isn't insignificant. Basically what this means though is for those of you using more competitive type quality settings, either of these GPUs should be able to push well over 100 FPS at 4K. It's also well worth noting that the RTX 3080 can take advantage of DLSS in this title, though we don't include those numbers as it really does need to be accompanied by a detailed visual analysis. Still, if you play a lot of Fortnite, DLSS would be a selling point of the RTX 3080 12 gigabyte. Last up, here's a look at the Cyberpunk 2077 results, and please note for this game, we're using the second highest quality preset without any ray traced effects enabled. Also, upscaling techniques such as DLSS and FSR haven't been enabled because again, they really need to be accompanied by a detailed visual analysis at each tested resolution. Under these test conditions, the 6900 XT is 16% faster at 1080p and then 11% faster at 1440p, while the margins are neutralized at 4K with both rendering around 45 to 46 FPS. So ideally for gaming at 4K, you'll either want to enable DLSS or FSR, or perhaps lower the quality settings further. So based on the dozen or so games just looked at, the RTX 3080 12GB and 6900 XT do appear very evenly matched. But before we draw any performance related conclusions, let's take a look at the data across all 50 games tested. Starting with the 1080p results, we see that the RTX 3080 12GB was just 3% slower on average, meaning the 6900XT was typically faster, and in fact there were just 7 games where the 3080 was faster by a 5% margin or more, with 25 games where it was slower by a 5% margin or greater. Of course, the extreme outlier here is Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, and not all of you are going to want to play that game, or are even interested in ray tracing at this point in time. So removing that outlier does double the margin seen previously, and now the RTX 3080 12GB is 6% slower than the 6900XT, 
though that is still rather an insignificant margin that suggests performance is typically going to be very similar between these two GPUs. That said, there were a handful of games where the 3080 was slower by a 20 to 30% margin. Moving up to 1440p reduced the margin further, and in fact, the 3080 is now 1% faster on average, though we are once again including the Metro Exodus Enhance result. So removing that swung the margins around, and now the 3080 is 2% slower, which is, of course, a negligible margin. There were 13 instances where the 3080 was faster by a 5% margin or greater, and then 24 where it was slower by a 5% margin or more. Finally, at the 4K resolution, the 3080 was 5% faster on average, and typically we deem anything 5% or less to be a tie. Removing Metro Exodus Enhanced reduced the margin to 3%, though we are seeing more significant wins for the GeForce GP on this title, such as Total War Warhammer, Serious Sam 4, God of War, The Outer World, and Dying Light 2, for example. Now, before wrapping up this comparison, here's a quick look at the ASUS RTX 3080 Tough Gaming OEC LHR 12GB graphics card. At the time of making this video, it's listed locally for 2400 Aussie or $1,770 US over at Newegg. So it's certainly one of the more expensive models, though that isn't exactly saying much at the moment. The Tough Gaming was one of the most impressive RTX 3080 models I checked out previously, and this new 12GB version is based on the exact same design. So this is a 2.7 slot design, so basically a three slot cooler, and it measures 30 centimeters long, stands 12.7 centimeters tall, and weighs in at 1385 grams. It's a mostly black design, so it will suit most builds, and ASUS has included the new tough theme design elements like the tire tracks on the back plate, for example. I really do like how there's no plastic on the card, apart from the fans, of course. The fan shroud, though, that's been constructed from aluminium, giving it a very premium look and feel. ASUS are also using their Axial Tech fans, and since there are three in total, they've reversed the rotation of the outer fans to reduce turbulence. And the fans themselves each measure 90 millimeters in diameter. I should also note that the card includes a stop fan feature, which activates when the GPU drops below 55 degrees. Then around at the I.O. end of the card, we find two HDMI 2.1 ports and three DisplayPort 1.4a outputs. So the kind of connectivity you'd expect from a premium high-end graphics card. Now, in terms of clock specifications, ASUS lists a core clock frequency of 1815 MHz, which is a 6% boost over the 1710 MHz default spec. The GDDR6X memory, though, that has been left at 19 gigabits per second. So we're just looking at a typical mild GPU overclock here. All of that said, let's move on to see what clock frequencies this model maintains when under load. Now, after 30 minutes of gameplay, the Tough Gaming peaked at just 67 degrees in a 21 degree room inside the Corsair Obsidian 500D, fully populated with fans. Now, to maintain this temperature, the fans spun at up to 2300 RPM. And while that's a reasonably high fan speed, the card was surprisingly quiet, generating just 42 decibels of noise. Finally, the typical core clock frequency seen during our testing was 1830 megahertz. Okay, so we've now got a very good idea of how the Radeon RX 6900XT and GeForce RTX 3080 12GB compare across a huge number of games. The question now is, which one should you buy? Assuming that you've given up waiting and just want one now. Actually, on that note, I still strongly recommend you continue to hold out if you can as pricing is slowly starting to improve as demand declines, particularly from miners. That said, I can't predict the future, and my advice is only meant to try and help guide you. For all I know, pricing could blow up in the next week and won't recover for another 12 months, though that does appear very unlikely at this point in time. It's also well worth keeping in mind that the Ampere and RDNA 2 architectures are well over a year old at this point and are expected to be replaced later this year with what should be vastly superior products. Of course, there's no guarantee you about to buy them this year, so it's a gamble either way. But with all that in mind, if you're ready and willing to buy right now and have a $1,500 to $1,800 US budget, the RTX 3080 12GB and 6900 XT are available the question is, which one should you buy? Typically speaking, the 6900 XT is the cheaper of the two, but of course pricing does vary quite wildly from one region to the next, and even one day to the next within the same region. As it stands though, there's not enough of a price difference, at least here in Australia and over in the US, to make one of these GPUs the obvious choice based on pricing alone. 
Thing is though, it's pretty much the same story when looking at rasterization performance, at least overall. Sure, they do trade blows, but overall it's unlikely you'd be able to spot a difference between these two products when actually gaming. And this of course isn't surprising, it's well known that AMD's Radeon 6000 series is extremely competitive with Ampere for rasterization performance, particularly in the mid to high end segment. This means when it comes to price and rasterization performance, you really can go either way right now. They're just that similar. And beyond price, there's really only one other reason why you might favor the Radeon RX 6900 XT, and that's the extra four gigabytes of VRAM. Though it is hard to say when that will be of benefit. Frankly, 12 gigabytes should be enough for the foreseeable and certainly shouldn't become an issue within the realistic lifespan of these GPUs as high-end gaming products. On the other hand, the RTX 3080 12GB has the advantage of DLSS support and more mature ray tracing, which generally yields far better results. In our opinion, DLSS has become quite a strong selling point of RTX branded products as support and quality continues to improve. Meanwhile, AMD still doesn't really have an answer to DLSS. Yes, FSR has helped lessen the blow, and it is quite an impressive solution in its own right, but it doesn't nullify DLSS, and it's not a selling point of Radeon GPUs, largely because it supports all GPUs, GeForce included. Then, as DLSS continues to improve, so does ray tracing, with more and more impressive titles offering ray traced effects, and typically those that use it quite heavily, use it well, see performance tank on RDNA 2 based products, like the flagship 6900 XT. For me personally though, ray tracing performance still isn't a priority, but as I said, the adoption and use of ray tracing is always improving, and I'm certainly much more interested in it today than I was, say, a year ago, and I'm expecting that trend to only continue. But regardless of your stance here, I feel it's quite easy to argue in favour of the RTX 3080 12GB, given those features. In short, if you're keen to check out ray tracing, and you think you'll play the latest titles with it enabled, a GeForce GPU really is a must, as performance is typically much better. I'd really only go for the 600 XT if I wasn't interested in ray tracing, and it was at least a few hundred dollars cheaper, which it was just a few short weeks ago. And of course, pricing will likely vary in your region, so if the 600 XT happens to be a good bit cheaper, then it will probably end up being the way to go for you. It's also well worth noting that all testing was conducted on a Ryzen 5000 system with AMD Smart Access Memory Technology enabled, so resizable bar, and this does favor Radeon GPUs more so than GeForce. So if you have a system that doesn't yet support resizable bar, the 3080 12GB will look slightly better overall when compared to what's shown here, though don't expect a significant difference, we're only talking about a few percent across the 50 game sample. In conclusion, new technologies such as smart access memory, ray tracing, and DLSS make it harder than ever to make a concise GPU recommendation, but hopefully the testing here has helped you narrow down your choice between the GeForce RTX 3080 12GB and Radeon RX 6900 XT, and if it did, please do hit the like button. You can also subscribe for more content. I will be updating all of our GPU comparisons, current generation GPUs with big 40 to 50 game benchmarks, hopefully 50 game benchmarks, and that'll be happening over the coming weeks and months. So yeah, make sure you subscribe for that. Also, if you love the work we do here at Harbour Unboxed and you want to support the channel directly, then we do have Floatplane and Patreon. You can sign up to either one of those and you get access to uh, exclusive Discord server where you can talk to us there and you also get to see all 50 graphs for the games benchmarked in this video, behind the scenes content, Q&As, and Tim and I get together and do a live stream for Floatplane and Patreon members once a month and that's a lot of fun, answer questions live and talk about whatever interesting topics there are throughout the month. But anyway, yeah, check that out if you're interested. If not, that is perfectly fine and I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host Steve and I'll see you again next time.